combinations and whether they go together. And then yeah. I said, here's what we're thinking about for the rest of the week, sport and Christianity. Can they go together? And we thought just a little bit about the opening book of the Bible where God creates us and gives us talents and relationships uh, that help us flow out of the image that he's mm. given us. Mm -hmm. But I did say at the tail end that things don't always sound as bliss as this. It doesn't always quite go to plan. And so with that in mind, I want you to think, actually, I want all of you to think, with the person next to you, can you recall a time of your worst sporting performance? Mm. Has there ever been a time where it is a bit of a rock bottom? Maybe drop a four, maybe an injury, maybe you just lost your head. We heard Archie a little bit yesterday, didn't we, talk about that. Can you remember a time of your worst sporting performance? 30 seconds of the person next to you. Have a chat. Grab the Okay, let's get you back in. Jen, mm. uh, not that we want to obviously make a big deal out of this, but oh, has yeah. there ever been a time? Yeah, unfortunately, yes. I can think of a really, it was an awful day at a rugby match. The week before had been, well, it had been my best sporting moment from yesterday. It had been a, a wonderful game and I had crunched my ankle a little bit, so I was feeling the effects of that this day and the team were just not gelling together. And I was feeling tired still from the week before, hadn't really recovered well. And I just felt like I was getting expected to do all the work, everything that was constantly, Jen, go run, run, run. And I just was really struggling uh, with both the effects of the week before, feeling the pressure from all my teammates mm. to do, do the work. And the team that we were playing against, were just they were just on it. They were on fire, so fair play to them. I just felt like the ref was being unfair to us as well. Mm. Everything felt like it was not going my way, basically. Yeah. Yeah, another feeling, yeah. another feeling. Maybe you've got something similar. Maybe it was worse than that. Uh, maybe you did something and you thought, why did I ever do that? Where did that come from? We have these moments in sport, little flashes of brokenness, don't we? Well, Jen, before you came to Sports Plus, you and your friend Josh had a little mm. chat together, starting to just think about this. Mm. And uh, we captured it on a video uh, just to try and help us understand now why we see some of the stuff we do in sport around us. We saw the, the high yesterday, some of the brilliant stuff, but let's be honest, turn on the TV, watch most live sport these days. It doesn't always look as good as that. Let's see this video and think a bit more about what Jen and Josh chat about. I've had amazing moments in my sport. Cup finals, great goals, lifelong friendships. It sometimes feels like I'm born for this. True, but on the other hand, it feels like I've had just as many tough times. Big losses, arguing with my teammates, losing my cool with the opposition. Yes, sport often brings out the worst in me just as much as the best. I know that I'm made in God's image. So why do I keep acting this way? Where did things go wrong? Well, we know that in the beginning, God gave Adam and Eve two things. Talents, to care for the world they were in, and relationships, he gave them each other. But they weren't satisfied, right? They wanted to do things their own way, without God. Exactly. In Genesis 3, we see that Adam and Eve disobeyed God. They ran from God and hid from him and blamed anyone but themselves. But hiding was useless. God knew that they wanted to run their own lives without him. The Bible then says all of us, like Adam and Eve, have done the same ever since. We've rejected God and tried to go our own way. Okay, but how does that affect me in my sport? Well, remember that we reflect God's image through our talents and relationships. But because the relationship with God has broken, the way we've been made to reflect him has been broken too. Let's read on and see what the consequences are of this brokenness with God. I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. Painful labour, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. 
So suddenly, even the most wonderful relationships between mothers and fathers, between parents and children, are painful and difficult. Exactly. It's just the same on the field too. Instead of the joy of competing, of pushing each other to do our best, we quickly turn to anger and hatred of our opposition. Let's keep reading on. Cursed is the ground because of you. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. So, the talents God gave Adam and Eve are now affected too? Sadly, yes. God gave Adam and Eve wonderful talents and creativity to tend to their garden. But this same garden is now full of thorns and thistles. Okay, so those bad moments in sport, when I dig an elbow in at a corner, when I lose my cool at a teammate, are all products of this broken dynamic between us and God. Totally. The times we try to win at any cost, the times we join in with gossip behind a teammate's back, the times we intentionally seek to hurt someone. All those angry, bitter, jealous feelings and reactions are a product of our relationship with God breaking down. As we go our own way and reject him, we use our talents and relationships in harmful, sad ways, both on the pitch and in life. So, is there any hope for me and my sport? So let's just think about that for a few minutes now uh, and really try and think about it for ourselves as well. Uh, you remember the triangles we looked at yesterday, yeah? It just starts to help us plot this a little bit. Uh, we said that God made us in his image. We were to reflect God in the kind of way that we played our sport within our characters. What, <clears throat> what you and Josh were just helping us think about, though, is the fact that that actually is now changed and, and it's broken, yeah? And we see this. We see this in sport. People... Uh, don't really care about representing God and, and showing his character. Much more, they want to think about their own image, how they look, how they come across. And so much is packaged around them to make sure they come across in the right way. Let me give you an example of this just a couple of weeks ago. I was watching a football game, quite an important qualifying <coughs> match for the World Cup, and the team was successful. But the captain for that team, uh, with about 60, 70 minutes to go, got subbed off. Uh, nothing wrong, just it was a good tactical change and they go on to win it. And he takes off his captain's armband and he gives it to the other person on his team. They go on to win, celebrations, cameras, photos. And the camera just quickly pans round back to that captain. And I was surprised, maybe this is little, I don't know, but I was surprised he was going back to the guy and getting the captain's armband back off him getting it back on his arm so that as he went over to the photos and as the cameras caught the whole event, his captain's armband was back on his arm. Mm. Something little, and there might not have been anything in it, but at the same time, it just starts to suggest, doesn't it, he wanted to be known as the captain. He wanted those photos to make sure he was the captain, regardless of the other guy who finished the game as the captain. We do these little things, don't we? We find ourselves just caring how do I look? How do I come across? If I say that to that person, do you think they'll like me? If I do that in front of other people and make that person look bad, do you think that's going to earn me some credit? We, we care about our image. And what we saw, you mentioned Genesis chapter 3, but what we see in these wor uh, words and these verses from the Bible is actually the real moment where Adam and Eve, they weren't happy being God's creation. They wanted to be on the same par as him. So, Jen, could you read these for us? Because I think it's really important that we read it this morning. Go for it. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the women saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So you see what the, the serpent, the devil tempts them with? Knowledge. Yeah, do you see that? Knowledge power, status. You won't surely die. You can gain this. You can get something that your loving, creating, caring God restricted from you. He tempts them with it. And instead of them being content, being made in God's image, in that perfect, lovely design, they exchange that. They want that infinite knowledge. And do you see where it leads them to? It actually leads to shame, 
fear, loneliness in some way, they're not content with God's design. They go at their own. And we thought about that a lot more last night, didn't we, Archie? Mm -hmm. Uh, helpfully explain where all this comes from, the darkness, the, the land of the shadow of death and the consequences that come with it. But this then flows then into those two other areas uh, because instead of our image kind of feeding our talents and our relationships, it actually flips now. So let's think about it for a moment. Firstly, talents. Remember, Adam was given talents, wasn't he, to care and cultivate the land. He named the animals. He would have been using his hands, his feet, his mind to look after things. But now, and you mentioned it in that clip, thorns and thistles. The verses will appear here. I won't read them, but I've just underlined some of the things that were the consequences of their rebellion. There's brokenness, there's pain, there's toil. It doesn't sound great, does it? It doesn't sound like looking after this garden is actually going to be an enjoyable experience. See, the talents that were once there to help them flourish, now are hard work. They're really hard work. They're broken. They're fractured. Here's a picture of some of my sporting injuries that I've had over the years playing rugby. I wonder if you can guess some of them, Jen. Oh, have, you, have you desiccated your shoulder there or broken your broken collarbone? Broken my collarbone, yeah. Oh, your jaw, that does not look good there. does not look good, That's no. a big old gap that shouldn't be there, right? Uh, correct. And then what has happened to your hand? It's my your thumb. thumb? My yeah. thumb, there you go. Broken. Oh. Fractured. You know, this is a visual, isn't it, of brokenness? Mm. Yeah? We were never meant to break like this. I'm sure that was not the way God designed it, for us to break. And in sport, we get injuries. And actually, injuries are frustrating and they're gutting, but they're a little, tiny little sign mm. that things maybe aren't the way they should be. Our talents are broken. We see it in injury. But it actually goes one step further than that, Jen. See, because remember that triangle we just saw? The arrow, instead of going down, is now pointing up. See, because you know what people do is they use their talents to make them image look better. I'll do that, even at the expense of my mate in my team, so that my image looks better. So our talents are broken. This is what leads to things like over-competitiveness. Anger, frustration, foul play. It's why people take drugs to try and make their body go one step further than it humanly naturally can. Because we want a better image. We want to be the top of the pile. So that's how our talents are broken. What about our relationships then? Let's look at this last bit together. Again, our relationships should flow out of the image. Yeah, remember Adam and Eve? We talked yesterday about those shared sporting experiences and moments. But again, unfortunately, there's disharmony. Again, I reference the verses here, and we just underlined some of the brokenness. Yeah, between Adam and Eve, there's hostility. Enmity is another word the Bible uses. They're not living in harmony with each other. Mm. And childbirth, something so magical, so glorious, so incredible. And I got three munchkins with me this week. An amazing moment. Yeah, ask my wife. <laughs> It wasn't particularly pleasant at that very moment in time. Something so great, mm. yet at the same time, so affected by the rebellion and the infiltration of sin in our world. And this flows into sport. You talked about a few things in the video, Jane. Can you remember, how do we see relationship breaking down in sport then? Yeah, I mean, I think a big one that I see most weeks is, is gossip, like just the chat behind people's backs as well. And the competition to even compete for the, the same position in a team, say. Some of the sort of snaky behaviour that can happen with that as well. It's just quite horrible. Absolutely. We see relationship breaking down. It might be something like gossip. It might be anger. It might be like money motivating move, moves, you know, where someone was so loyal to their team, kissing the badge one week, and then they get a massive paycheck, go to another team, and they're kissing that badge. <laughs> There's no relationship. It's all about myself, getting some money in my pocket. Now, that's an example I'm sure not and many of us get the privilege of experiencing, getting paid for our sport. But I wonder if you see this in little pockets of your sport. Yeah, have you ever been on receiving end of a bit of banter or bullying because maybe you weren't quite as good as someone else in your team? It's horrible, isn't it? Maybe you're giving it. Laughing and mocking when someone can't control the ball or someone can't keep up. It's such a sad situation we find sometimes in sport. Something that was so designed to be so good, mm. to function so well in great harmony, 
unfortunately it's broken it's it is fractured now listen sport can still be enjoyable of course it can it can still bring uh, joy and, and satisfaction in parts and we still can use our talents and our relationships but here's the point it's really messy it's really messy and so I what I'm not here to kind of make you feel a bit doom and gloom going into first sport, but I am here to try and give us a little bit of a wake-up call to help us understand why we see some of this brokenness. Sport, as good as it is, is not the ultimate. It fails to deliver. We have injuries, we have dips in form, we have relationship breakdown. Check out this quote from an ex-Wimbledon champion. Look what he says. I had won Wimbledon twice before, once as the youngest player, and I was rich, I had all the material possessions I needed, money, women, cars, everything. I know that this is a bit of a cliche, but sometimes those that have everything actually have nothing. He turned to the person interviewing him and said, you tell me what life's all about. See, when we make ourselves the number one podium spot of our lives and we package everything around us and our talents and relationship to make ourselves look as good as they are and we chase after all of that, this is sometimes the, the end result. God has a different plan. Mm. And Josh says it in the video, is there any hope? <laughs> yeah. Well, there is, but we'll get to it tomorrow. We'll get to it tomorrow. Mm. So you remember yesterday we had our actions? Yes. Born to play, let's see it all together. Born to play, please. One, two, three. Born to play. But today we are broken by sin so we're going to go broken you can break any part of your body totally up to you <laughs> broken whatever you like not your, not the person next to you yeah. <laughs> all right don't break their arm but we're broken okay by sin okay should we do it together one two three broken by sin let's do it all to both together born to play and broken by sin one two three born to play and broken by sin.